Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Yoshi's Story. The last time we played, we completed the first page over for the third time and are now going off to the second page once again because we have nothing else better to do than do that because I always say this stuff because you should know that by now which I still like saying it over anyway. Let's just begin. Start from page two. Now as you can see, we are back in the cavern. Except this time, instead of going through these caves like the Bone Dragon Pit, and the, uh, Blarg Spoiler, we are heading into a more, less, lava-like area with the Jelly Pipe. As you can see with the pipes in the background, we are going through the, uh, different area. It's kind of something that's also unique about some of these, uh, levels in the world. I'll explain that as I go into the level, though. So, before we begin, we need to pick a Yoshi. I don't plan on using a special Yoshi, though it is highly recommended because there are lots of enemies that are worth more. Uh, not points, but healing-wise, if you use them, and more harmful stuff if you're not. But, because of that, I'm going to go with the challenge and play with Blue Yoshi. Because, why not? So, right minute we begin, we immediately fall down into a little uh, place with this blue stuff right here. You have to hit the block to know what it is. Actually, nothing not really know. It's just a little uh, jelly. You step on it, it'll go down. You walk and run, it'll go back up. There's nothing really to worry. This block will tell you about something else related to the jelly, though. It must be jelly. Slick and slimy, red or blue, try walking this mysterious goo. Oh, wait. Uh, there. If you see a ghost in the jelly, ground pound it's his head or try to run away. So basically, at times, there'll be ghosts in the jelly. You can try to avoid it, or you can ground pound his head. Which, by the way, ground pounding is the easiest way to reach the bottom of these areas if you need to go in a hurry. So apart from that, you can see we're in a whole different setting from the cave room before. And the music is quite cool. So yeah, these levels take place in pipes. These pipes are pretty cool, as you can see in the back. There's a lot of references to Yoshi and Nintendo. And I hate this little enemy. This enemy, if you eat it, you will lose health. It'll do nothing if you're any other Yoshi, so watch out for him. Otherwise, we got the first Miss Warp and this little ghost jelly guy. Just like it says, ground pound its head. So I'm gonna wait for it to come back and ground pound. It will should die after the ground pound, and we can just keep on going. So apart from that, you notice how in the background, we have these little things that are like, uh, Nintendo. Eventually, you'll find things to other references, like, uh, 64 here. And... We'll find some more as we go through. So, apart from that, let's just get going. We find this little water blob again. See, as we eat it, it makes us worse. It'll do nothing if it's otherwise. So, the best thing to do is chuck an egg at him. But from that, we come up to a little flower that heals us, so we don't have to worry much about that. And a bunch of secrets where we ground pound, it'll make coins. Which is one right here, and one right here. I don't know these off by heart. So apart from that, we got more water. And another egg with a bunch of coins heading down. Apart with some jelly up here, it's not very important, because all it does is, uh... Oh crap. All it does is, uh, hold fruit, so you don't have to worry about that. Apart from that, we have some coins headed down here, so we might as well head down here. We are down, we find some of these butterflies. They're worth points if you hit them while they're both pink, so we're gonna just throw the egg when they're both pink. Boom. Lots of points. But now let's keep going. And we're in red jelly now, with coins down below. Uh, a good way to move through the jelly without being picked up by it, just to point out, is by using your sniff and walking like that. It becomes very important in one part, but otherwise you can just jump, because it's a lot faster. Jelly will slow you down. But from that, we have this little block here, which I'm going to hit once I this. It's a multi-coin block, so we're going to keep hitting it, keep on hitting it, until a melon pops out, which is our very first melon. But from that, we come up to this next area. Coins down there, and as we keep going, we can see there's spikes. Those spikes will hurt you, and you're going to want to avoid them. Thankfully, unlike most Yoshi games, they aren't insta-death. So apart from that, let's hit this. Look out, if you bump into spikes, you'll get hurt. Do your best to stay alert. Now, this is where that technique comes where I applied before. You want to go as low as you can to jelly by either standing it or ground pounding. Then you can use your sniff to walk through it, and it'll push through it slow enough. You can try to run through it, but it'll pick you up. It is best used to have your sniff at this level, because then you can get the coins as well. You most likely will not get hit. So apart from that, we head off. There are more of these uh, butterflies here. 
You can hit them when they're pink for most points, or you can just wait it out or just smash right through them. It doesn't really matter what you do. I am going to go for the points because it prevent prevented itself. Apart from that, we know we have these blocks here. Now these blocks, I actually just recently figured something out while going through this level. Uh, these blocks, you can actually figure out what's inside them basically by sniffing. As you can see, Yoshi's saying there's something here. If I push the box over to here, and come back over here, he says there's nothing here, or something close by. And now it's over here. Basically, that's how you can tell what's inside the box, and in that one level, that's how you can uh, tell what's inside this here block. However, we're going to need this block for something else right now. We'll come back for the melon later. As you can see up here, there's a giant heart. You can access that giant heart only by using this block, and by floor jumping upward. Or by using the infinity floor jump. Apart from that, it also leads to a melon that's right here if you snip. That's one of the few melons that are tricky to get, so you're going to grab it. After, of course, you grab that, you can go back and around to smash the block to reveal the melon inside of it. Now, this level is going to have a number of those blocks. A lot of them aren't going to have anything in them, so you're going to watch out for that. But from that, we come down to this part down here with uh, these butterflies. You just want to go down it. You just want to drop straight down for now. However, you will notice as we drop, there's this little other path to the left. That little path we will go through later, for now we're going to head down. It is actually recommended that you go down the other path first if you want. Because it's a little bit faster than going the path I am, because my path will lead to a dead end, which leads you right back to the beginning. So for that, I'll head down through here, and just head off. Now, before you head off here, you can see we got this new kind of light blue jelly that you can't really see through, unlike the others. Seems like there's nothing really to worry about, except this little ghost here, which hurt me. And we got ourselves a block, which I can use to explain something else. Remember how I kept throwing these into the uh, other blocks before? And have them, uh, I just can't play this guy. Have them throw them into the other blocks before, and they would produce uh, melons each? That works the same with this jelly. You push the block into the jelly, and it will create a melon. In time. So from that, eat the melon. Now, before you continue on, there's also one more melon that you're gonna miss. Because you can't really see through this, there's actually a uh, hidden... Uh, they actually hide a melon right in here. Right here, as you can see. Get you can see, there is a melon right here. You're gonna wanna eat that before going. You can stick your tongue down there and easily grab it like this, but that's just to show you that it was there. So apart from that, let's just keep going. Come to here, and we notice a mechanic that is used in that last castle we were in. This is, well, it looks like a pipe. It is a doorway. Press up and we'll go through it. However, we do not want to go through it yet because it leads back to the beginning. And we want to wake up the second Miss Warp beforehand. Apart from that, we come up to a little Miss Warp, uh, what? A little talking block here, and it says a giant slug. This slimy creepy likes dark. He hides away from fireworks. What he's trying to point out is a weakness for a mini boss that's coming up. Before we do that, however, we can see that there is a little surprise ball up here. Now, it is required to go up here because you can see there is a box. This box, it'll have nothing inside it. But as you can see over here with the jelly, we do exactly what we did with the previous box, and it will produce a melon. Apart from that, it'll create a super happy heart! Which, I get it, will create a lot of coins here, so you want to grab those. Apart from that, we can keep going over here. As you can see, there's another area next to this jelly. There is nothing under here, so nothing to worry about. We will climb up here, find ourselves a vase, and a melon. So apart from that, eat the melon, go in the vase, and we arrive at a mini boss room. This uh, giant slug is a mini boss, but this one's a lot easier than most because you got this little flower here to heal you, and you've got this uh, uh, egg box to create the eggs to help you defeat them. This bot mini boss takes three hits and only gets hurt by the explosion of the Yoshi egg, as explained by that little talking box. As you can hit it directly, it'll make it retreat, but it does nothing. However, when you explode the egg nearby him, it'll create... Okay, I, when I failed because I actually hit him. When you explode the egg near him, he will flash like that, which will show he got hurt. Which is why it says he doesn't like fireworks, because 
as I've been saying all those other times, fireworks! Fireworks! Ow. Well, not owls and I got her like this. And then you can easily hit him in a combo too like this. So it's a lot easier to hit. Once you have three times, he is dead, and the giant heart here is yours. So we got ourselves our second giant heart because of that. And there's nothing else really in here, so once you reload your eggs, you can just leave through the fight face. It'll lead you right back to where you were before, so nothing really to worry about. Apart from that, there's nowhere to go but using either using the Miss Warp or going into the pipe. Now, if you've activated Miss, if you've waken up Miss Warp one, the easiest way to actually use is this Miss Warp, because this will lead you directly to the beginning to that pipe you saw right away, as I'll show right now. And yes, you go straight into it just like any other door. So as you can see, it leads you right over to where you started. So I'm kind of just wasting time here. As you can see, yeah, the first Miss Warp will lead you just a little bit forward. So with that, I will either see you when we reach the next part that we skipped over, or when I... Yeah, I don't think it'll take that long anyways. As you can see, we are now where we are at before, with that little insert section where we could have gone left. Now this... Now, you want to go left from the first time, because it's a lot easier to do this all, because it'll eventually all lead down there anyways. Uh, so yeah, when you head down here, it's an extra path that leads to a melon and a pipe leading to a whole second area. This second area will contain the other two Miss Warps and the other half of the melons. Apart from that, we are in this next area. We can see more of those Yoshi signs, Nintendo 64, and Nintendo, and I went in the pipe accidentally. As you notice, there is also another thing I forgot to mention with these, uh... Just some things I want to explain for. First off, you notice we're in a pipe level other than a underground level. Some of the worlds do this where they actually change the entire theme of it around, so it's generally the same, but it's also gen it's also different. As you can see right here, there's a uh, we're in the pipe area instead of an underground area. The next level is like that as well. In uh, another world too, I believe it's uh, the fifth page. It's like that for the uh, higher to the third and fourth level where it's above ground instead of underwater, and it takes place on like near pirate ships and stuff, I believe, which is why you see the pirate ships above. Somewhat the same for others, but I don't exactly remember. Apart from that, I want to point out some little references in the wall. I will actually explain that later. We need more references to this. But as you may have noticed from the sides here, I will explain as I enter this room. As you can see right about here, you can see some words that say Z-E-L-D. -E. And then you can see down here, L-D-A. It is trying to say Zelda, which is a reference to the Legend of Zelda series. And there's one of these guys. These guys are the other thing you want to watch out. However, you can eat them and they'll give you eggs. If you're fully healed, uh, if you're a special Yoshi, they will recover you. But now they will roll wherever you're going, unless they're on a hill. So they'll roll that way. Apart from that, we hear some boos off in the distance. These boos are going to be very important to us. But first, before we do that, let's eat this melon here, and... Dude, nothing really else. I think I may have missed some melons. But from that, let's just head down here. Oh yeah, that's right. I want to save this one for later. For now, we're going to head over here. This contains a melon. However, this is the area where the letter is. Meaning there are no mini games and no other stuff. It took me a while to find this letter because I didn't know where it was. But that we have here, we can see Poochie right away. Poochie is obviously showing us a little secret. The secret will always be here, so if you ever need it again and again, you can ground pound over. However, Poochie only appears once, and once you ground pound, he will be gone. It's just a secret area that leads up to here, which leads us to an area we want to go. First off, we're gonna take off these guys, because there is a melon hidden right here. Once we grab that melon, we can go straight up and out. Apart from that, there is another melon right here. Very useful to get them all. Keep going. And we can see that the last giant heart inside this little area. We grab that, and we're good. We can just head up and out. Apart from that, we can see this little this boo here. Very awkward how it does something when I look up at it. And when, yeah. That's because this boo is controlled by your very actions. I will explain that once I go to its block, which is right over here. Who's Boo? Big or small, a ghostly Boo will move the opposite direction as you. 
The control stick moves up, down, and all around. Plan your moves with great care. What they're trying to say is that you control the boo directly with your control stick. Uh, however, his controls are opposite of your own. You press right, he will move right. You move left, he'll move right. You down, he moves up, up, move down. Use the plan accordingly, and as you can see, he holds a melon behind him. Apart from that, I'm going to skip their melons for now because I want to go down and show you that letter. Which is right here. You don't have to worry because boos only disappear once you get their melon. So apart from that, we've got here. You might want to watch out for this one too because as the bouncing coins go into here, they will disappear. So with that, because it's a bouncing coin one, let's begin. So yeah, get them all, we get the melon, and we get a super happy which reveals the letter Y. So yeah. Y is our letter of this level, which I am still not keeping track, but I will keep track of it later. But from that, if we keep going on, we can see there is a block here. There is nothing really important about that block, really, though. This block has nothing inside it, and we will use it for a later purpose, which I'll push over here. But from that, we head up here, and we can find ourselves the third Miss Warp, which we will wake her up, and another melon, which we can eat right away. But the main reason I came up here is because it leads us to the other side of this here question mark block, which we haven't really seen before. Uh, it's just left to that area was. We can't access it normally because of this. But now we can push this block over here, and now we've got the boo in our way. Boos will move, thankfully, no matter how uh, you set them up. But you uh, basically want to set them up so you can grab the melons. So that as the boo moves, he can't move into you, and so on and so forth. So basically how I'm going to set up is just like this. I'm going to walk under him so he'll move over me, but I'll do it slowly so that... Actually, you better do it faster so that you can get have the melon reveal itself. Then when you're right under it, just go eat it, set him up, and out of his way. For that, I'll just keep pushing this till the next boot comes. I'll also be holding down to send him upwards. Where is that boot? There he is. So yeah, with that, I'll send him down like that. Wait for the melon to get to its area. There we go. With that, I can avoid these boos because these boos are good as nothing now. And we will keep pushing this box, which you're probably wondering why I'm pushing it so far. The reason is because it contains, like, like it should contain nothing. This is indicating something else, by the way. You're being misled by uh, this. But from that, you can see... Uh, okay, I made a mistake here with this. I wonder if I can get up. There we go. Push it over here. Apart from that, we can see there's a little secret here, I believe. Yeah, it's right here, the secret that is misleading again. So many coin secrets. Watch out for those. But yeah, as you see, there's nothing in here. We're going to keep pushing it all the way here. Because you can see by pushing it all the way here, there's some jelly that we can throw it into. So these jellies that were hurting us before with hiding the coins can be helpful as we push it in. And... A melon pops out! So with that, we eat the melon and head back up. We just head back up to where we were going before, because there's one last area for us to go, to the right. This contains two watermelons, as well as blocks we can break. This leads us to the fourth Mr. Warp, once I break that. Go through here. And finally, I can make references to other characters that I finally noticed. As you can see right here, guess what it is? Luigi! Yes, Luigi and Mario are both mentioned in this level. Uh, Mario is mentioned elsewhere, I just have pointed it out. Do a little background stuff like that. It's pretty cool how they put stuff like that. I mean, Zelda too, right there. I don't- as far as I'm concerned, there's no other references. Just Mario, Luigi, Zelda, Nintendo, and the Nintendo 64. Apart from that, we come up to this next area with these rolling spike guys, which I don't know their name. You can use these areas to hide from them, or you can just outright eat them. So apart from that, I'm just gonna keep going. There's a little secret here for coins. I don't know how I remember that one, so let's just keep going. And we have ourselves a melon here. You can eat this guy to get an egg if you don't have any, but we can otherwise hit it and get ourselves a melon. Eat these guys if you ever need eggs. You can only eat them once they actually come out though, and be even before they roll, so like even like this. Ow. Hey! <sighs> okay, I'll wait for the next one. And yeah, but apart from that, we come up to here, we can see that there's a melon. But not just one melon, two melons. And not just two melons and a banana, but also a boo. We can use this boo to our advantage by just going like that. And eating the melon. 
Okay, maybe not just simple like that. Booze are kind of complicated that how, with how they do this. Okay, now I'm a little worried. Okay. I'm gonna break... Uh, yeah. You can also do... That is a... Here's an alternate idea. Up, down. Yoshi does not move up and down. Eat the melon. Hey, it looks like we got super happy too. We're gonna get Boo out of here. And with that, uh, just eat it. Move the them over there and split them apart from the banana so I don't accidentally eat it. So I can ground pound, pop those, and get going. There's some spikes over here we don't have to worry about. And there's another Boo up ahead. But first we'll get this melon. And eat that. Break this. And now we are pretty close to finishing up. We come up to this last little area where we have this uh, guy coming right here. We want to just eat some if you don't have enough eggs. As we can see, there is a blue block area that we can go through. We can actually stand on it too if there's enemies coming down from up there. As you can see, there's a bunch of question mark bubbles in there. I think there's like four or three or five. I don't know how many. I mean, I can't actually tell you. I know I don't know how many there is because one of them, I believe, is the white shy guy. And as we've got all the Yoshis, he will not appear, so his bubble is not here because of that. As such, there's only three. All of these are melons. You only really need to hit like one or two of them to be good. I hit all three, but the reason I say that is because, well, first off, we're five away from fishing it, which causes us super happy. We can eat that and just keep going on. We have this next area. We can see that there is a little secret here. That's not the secret I was thinking about. But over here, we find ourselves a melon. Eat the melon, and we're three away. Apart from that, we can just keep going, eat these guys, and we can see a little boo here, the last boo. Once we get past this boo, we come up to the final melons. Inside this block, and that block all the way down there. Here's where the problem comes out. You want to catch up. This block is going to be falling faster than you. So the way to easily get catch up to it is by ground pounding. However, you do not want to ground pound. How I suggest you push it slowly off the edge, and when the moment it falls, jump over and ground pound. As you can see, you can catch up to it, and that's it. Push these two together, and we're done. Eat the two melons, and that's it. That. Okay, you can't hit through the ground like that, apparently. And that's it! All 30 melons have been collected. And with that, we see our score. There aren't that many enemies this time. And we didn't get as good as a score as I thought. Wow, I thought we had a better score than that. Maybe I'm just not count- Maybe I'm just not doing this right. Oh well, so with that, we will add it to our total score, which, yeah, we're 200 below. Uh, like 130. So yeah, with that, we added it. We're getting closer to our best again. I'm not even sure if we're going to pass it this time, even with the uh, two Yoshis on the first two pages. But yeah, anyways, with that, we can just throw happiness all over the cavern, and their jelly pipes once again. And be happy about it. The Yoshis decide to take a shortcut through a pipe that went underground. Below, it was dark and damp, and the creatures that lived were there were ugly and slimy. They were scared, but they crawled through. What could be at the other end? The page turned, and the Yoshis grew happier. Next time on Let's Play Yoshi's Story, we've got ourselves another boss fight as we come up to the Poochie and Nippy. That sounds really weird. I don't even remember this level. So yeah, with that, thanks for watching. I've been Yoshman222. If you like this video, make sure you like it. And if you like the series, make sure you subscribe because I post videos every few days. So yeah, with that, good night everyone.